Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain feasible solutions for Yu-Gi-Oh! So in this video, I'm just going to talk about the feasible solutions for Yu-Gi-Oh! What I feel um, Konami could do for the game. And these are things that I'll point out that some of them have been done. And like, for example, Rarity Collection. Rarity Collection is essentially the rarities of how Yu-Gi-Oh! is presented in the OCG. And we are having it in just one particular box. However, in OCG, it's for every single booster box. They always spread it the way Rarity Collection is spread. But anyways, this is a whole... What this video will be talking about is just a sort of solutions that the OCG has and seeing that realistically they can be implemented into the TCG as one of the methods has been implemented and others could be implemented to make a better experience for Yu-Gi-Oh! Going, uh, going through. 1. OCG layout. 2. Focused sets. 3. Conclusion. 1. OCG layout. As you can see in front of you, you can see how cards are written in the TCG, and then you can see on the other side how it would be written in the OCG. The Borrowed Savage Dragon with numbers on it is how the OCG, how they write card effects. And if it was translated and put in, obviously, with the organization of how they do it in the OCG, that's how it would be. So in the OCG, what they tend to do is they tend to put bullet points, but for purposes of this video, I'm putting in, I've put in the numbered uh, system, one, two, three, four. So they put a bullet point on the summon effect of the monster. For example, we can see in Savage and Borrowed Savage Dragon, we can see they are number one. If this card is synchro summoned, you can equip one leg monster from your graveyard to this card. Does not sound too bad. On the second bullet point, they put in usually the effect of the card or any sort of like attack modulation or anything that's related to the card that relates to the, uh, to the summon effect. So usually it is put here in the second bullet point, whereas the first bullet point just refers to what happens when the card is summoned. The second bullet point refers to after the card is summoned, what, what other additional effects does it have? So it is put here. And on the third point is where we get to the card's actual effect that the card actually has. Okay, for example, in Borrowed Savage Dragon, it says here when a card or an opponent's effect, you can remove one borrow counter from this card, negate the activation. And then finally, at the fourth bullet point, we'll have you can only use this effect of Borrowed Savage Dragon once per turn. So the fourth bullet point usually showcases how many times you can use the effect of a set card. And um, this sort of structure and layout means that in OCG, the doesn't tend to be ruling issues of cards because cards have a have a very straightforward layout and understanding the card is much easier. Whereas in TCG, we have a whole cobbled mess and it's just, everything is just put in all together like that and you don't really know what's what. Facts. So I've done it, I've shown it to you here like this to just showcase the difference. And this is something I feel that uh, in, uh, we can implement in the TCG. Um, I think we have examples of cards that have this sort of layout. For example, um, Ash, Blossom of Joy Sp Ash Blossom of Joy Spring has this layout. If you saw it in my, um, in my Common Scenarios video, I'm sure you've seen that. It has a bullet point layout there. Also, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, if you've seen my latest common scenarios video, you've seen also, again, it has the bullet point structure layout. I feel this bullet point structure layout, I think, is the way to go. And I feel like every card in Yu-Gi-Oh! should be written in the TCG in this way. Not only does it make cards easier to read, but it also makes it that ruling set cards or understanding the cards becomes easier. It's much it's easier to understand, easier to read, and easier to explain to newcomers, especially. And it will also kill the scene 
of a reputation rather of Yu-Gi-Oh being complicated, especially in the TCG. If information is presented in a clear and concise way, then it's not going to look so bad. We have focused sets. So I feel this is something that can be implemented in the TCG. I think um, it's not difficult really. I think we do need focus sets. We do need um, sets. We have way too many sets. Like let's look at this here. We have way too many sets uh, that are out. We have as a, as a as I think I we talked about this before with the booster guide. You know, with all the sets that we have, obviously you had a booster guide there. But coming to this point, we just have too many sets and there needs to be more focus on the sets that we have. The sets that usually we have are the um, side sets, the core sets, and, and then you have the Battles of Legend, uh, you know, sets. We have the Ghost set and it just keeps increasing and there's just so many sets. Remember, as I said, we have... 12 sets in a year which i feel is too much usually we should be having only 10 really if you think about it four core sets and three side sets meaning we should have only seven um sets in seven sets in total i think no possibly 10 because you have the mega tin and you have rarity collection making it nine so we should have really nine sets in a year and i feel that's enough 12 is a bit too much especially when we we didn't used to have so many sets in the past i think megatins as well was a relatively new thing that we got uh midway in you know pendulum format but the point is is that we've just increased the number of sets and We've increased quantity, but we've not increased the quality. And indeed, quantity doesn't equal quality. And that's something that I feel we can change. I feel I think this is something that Konami can implement, can change, and can give us more focus sets. For example, let's look at Maze of Millennia that came out last month in January. This is a set that is completely utterly lacking. The maze sets that premiered last year is just not good enough, okay? It just barely has anything there. You, we only have like, what is it, two cards? Three cards in this set that are good. We have our first reprint of, in Maze of Lenny, we have our first reprint of Triple Tactics Thrust. You have Bonfire, and then you have Transaction Rollback. Only three cards in the set are good. Again, this is just not good enough. Say, for example, if Maze of Millennia didn't exist. Um, we look at Phantom Nightmare again. It's not a good set. Why is it not a good set? Because when you look at it and study it in more detail, there's only like two good cards in this set. But say, for example, as I've said before, if we cancel the Maze of Millennia set and we cancel the Ghost set, and, and we add those uh, good cards into the Phantom Nightmare. So, for example, the ghost set that would, have, that would come out this month, let, uh, in, sorry, next month in, in you know, March, we put it in the Phantom Nightmare. So, Phantom Nightmare would have a ghost in it. And then we would put all the good all the three cards that we'd have in the Maze of Millennia, we'd put it in Phantom Nightmare. And so if we would do that, Phantom Nightmare would start to look like this. You would have Poplar there, which is a really good card. The Fire Princess, again, really good card um, that people will value. It would have a ghost in there, which means that would really be good because everyone likes pulling a ghost. And then you'd have Bonfire in there as well to look forward to. You'd also have to put... Um, Triple Tactics Thrust to look forward to. And then finally, that's, fi that's five cards. And then finally, your sixth card would be... Um, what's the other card in Maze of uh, Millennia Bonfire? Uh, Transaction Rollback. So we have six cards. And counting the other card that we have in for um, Phantom Nightmare, you know, some other good cards in there anyways, it would... Essentially, we've basically made a set that only had two good cards in it, now has six. And that's not counting the other good cards in that in, in Maze of Millennia, in uh, Phantom Nightmare that are there, that could prop this up to maybe ten, possibly more. 
But the point is, when the set is much more focused, then it means that there's more value for money uh, for the player base. And there's also more value for the money for the distributors. Because at the end of the day, if this is not solved, everyone suffers. Currently in TCG, the main problem is, is that there's very few good sets because we have so many bad sets because we have we, it's a quantity situation of our quality situation so distributors have to buy every set they don't really have a choice and because every and because most sets are bad and you have very few good sets distributors shops um and everywhere else is losing money this is why the game doesn't grow as much and so we all lose out but however this could change if konami would implement a more focused set mindset. If we removed for say Maze of Millennia sets and the ghost set, all of a sudden and sprinkled those all the ghosts in um the ghost set in between all around the core sets and side sets, everyone would benefit. Definitely something to think about. So overall conclusion I would say that that's where we are with Yu-Gi-Oh! at the moment. Um, I feel there is a solution to the game. And these solutions that I've posed are reasonable and is something that Konami can actually do. Now, would they do them? I definitely feel like the layout one, especially for what I said, the OCG layout, I think we could do this. I mean, we've already got rarity collection where we're using the OCG rarities that they have in every other set. We've done this in one set. So why not just, let's just go full ham and just use the layout they have already for OCG cards. We already do it with some cards like Ash Blossom of Joy Spring and Ghost Bell. We've seen the system and it works. Why not just implement this system and use it as a standard way of doing every single card in Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't see the problem with this, especially in TCG. We have it so for some cards, but not for these cards. Why not have it for every card? And I know what most, peop most people are saying is because cards would be ruled differently. But I would say that is complete and utter nonsense. It's not about... Forget about ruling cards differently. This is about making Yu-Gi-Oh accessible to everyone. Yu-Gi-Oh, we can eat our cake and have it. It can be complicated, but why should it be complicated and hard to understand? It can be complicated and also easy to understand. Yu-Gi-Oh's complexity can remain. And it can just be easy to understand and read. There's nothing wrong with a complex game. Yu-Gi-Oh's always been uh, difficult. It's always been, com um, you know, it's always been difficult to get into. But that doesn't mean it has to be complicated to understand. Complicated to uh, to understand and difficult to get into are two different concepts. And I feel Yu-Gi-Oh should have one concept of just being, uh, you know, a complex game, but not really should should not be difficult to understand. Those are, to me, I feel are pointless. And that's why I feel Yu-Gi-Oh! won't grow. And I think this is hopefully Konami can address this and we can go to the next level in terms of growth. And that's all I've got to say about this matter. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! master. My faith, right, is in your hands.